Welcome to my fish room. Okay, I think it's working. I'm not really sure. Anyhow, we're back at Jason's. Uh, this is now Tuesday, March 19th. We haven't been here for a couple weeks because they went away on vacation. So this is what it's looking like now. Okay, you can see there's a bit of algae on the glass and stuff like that. The rocks are mostly all cleaned off. Apparently one of the firefish did leap out the back, so that's a bit of a bummer. But other than that, the fish are doing fine. See the gorgonians are all open. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, the tap water. You can have a good tankless tap water. You don't have to have RO. Uh, it is easier if you have RO because that way you don't have the uh, issues of the stuff. <laughs> My camera I wasn't paying any attention, so you kind of got a tilt there. Okay. So, I just got a uh, response to one of my videos. Okay, this is a comment posted on, uh, we got fish for Valentine's Day from Fish For Me Too. You know what prevents me from getting back into saltwater, Carl? The high cost of a protein skimmer and the other accessories. I have an obsessive need to have the best filtration and maximum amount of filtration in the protein skimmer I want, want wood. Okay, and then more wood. Trying to sign on to YouTube through my phone. I haven't figured that out yet. Anyhow, for Fish For Me Too, make your own protein skimmer. It's easy. Take a couple of buckets. Take two buckets. Find the one that's bigger than the other. Okay. So you're going to put two buckets together like this by cutting this rim off. Okay, see this rim right here? Cut this off, then this bucket will sit down inside the other bucket. Okay? If you need to go down a little further, cut it off here, and then this bucket will go into there. That's your bubble chamber. So you put your water in at the top, so the water would be going here. Cut that out, put a tube on there, just a piece of uh, like hose, like two inch hose. Cut the hole that it's the same size, stick it in there, and then put your cup on that, or just have it come up, have an elbow and a bucket, okay? So now you've got a protein skimmer that's this size, it costs you the price of two pails, if you can get them for free, that's not much. Have the fitting go in here, and the water go down, and then just put a, have a pump suck the water out, blow it back in, and have a venturi on that, and it just rotates. Your water comes down from the tank, in the top, overflows out, and uh, I'll actually probably do a video of that. That sounds cool. So you'd have it like that. There would be your tube for the collection thing. Down here you have one out, have a pump with a venturi, and just blowing it back in. So all it's doing is pulling water out and churning it around. Have a fitting here, well on the other side, that comes up to this level and pours back into your sump. And that way, the water goes in here, so it returns from the tank, through the protein scammer, bubbles, lots of foam, come up here, and instead of having the uh, collection cap like this, have it just come up, an elbow, and down. Because uh, that's all you need to do is dry your foam out, and you're going to have to kind of put some Teflon tape around here, but uh, you're going to have a huge protein skimmer for next to nothing. Okay, anyhow, let's get back to this one. See, when I first got into this hobby, I had no money. <laughs> so, I did all of these things. <laughs> okay, what we're bringing in today is happiness and joy. Sponges. Nice bit of color. The uh, Fish For Me Too website, it says the overfiltration king. And if you watch his videos, yes. <laughs> he has a lot of filters. A lot, a lot of filters.
Hey, we had one person ask me why I don't mix the salt up better. As long as it gets in the tank, it seems to be okay. See, with sponges, the thing is, they can never be exposed to air. Oh, I was wondering why the filter was working. I just put stuff in it this way. Okay, and a nice coral banded shrimp. In this part of the country, I know every place else they call it a banded coral shrimp, which makes far more sense, but it ain't a shrimp. It's actually a prawn. But Mandarin gobies ain't gobies. Eel gobies ain't an eel or a goby. Some of these names. So Hortensia got a job. She's working at the House of Death now. She's real happy. You know why? She's going to want a ride home. Poppy, are you going to the fish room? Can you give me a ride home? Yeah. And feather dusters. They're tube worms. They don't really do any dusting. Just wave. Do all the wave. about shrimps is you got to acclimate them for a long time. So get started right away. If you have the option uh, drip acclimation and then you just go home, that's what we do with fish shrimp. So you can see there's some algae in the glass. But then again, it's been two weeks. But yeah, it takes kind of long, good. Anyhow, you've seen me clean this before, so it's kind of boring. So, I just wanted to show you what it looked like on March 18th. All right, bye bye. Okay, so uh, we're done today. Let's show you what we put in. So, we've got tree sponge, ball sponge, a couple feather dusters there. Coral banded shrimp, a couple more sponges, and another feather duster. So the water's a little hazy because we just got through changing water, but uh, other than that, everything's tickety boo. All right, so this is the tank. It's basically been three months, roughly, because it was just before Christmas, and now it's the end of uh, no March 19th. All right. So this is Jason's tank with tap water. Alright, bye.